In this video, I'm going to show you nine different Adobe Illustrator tools that you can use to create better t-shirt designs and to also save time while you're designing. Now, a quick tip before we get started, if you want to create designs for black t-shirts, you want to head over to File, Document Setup, then you want to tick simulate colored paper and then where this white box is change that to black and then if you click ok and ok the artboard background color will actually change to black which makes life a lot easier so the first tool i'm going to show you is the type tool and you might say well it's very obvious that we should be using the type tool for t-shirt design however i'm going to show you some of the variations of the type tool which can be really handy to create some more unique layouts so let's say for example we want to have some text arched along this sunset right here that maybe says hiking or mountain or something and by the way if you're wondering where you can get this sunset it's actually part of my free graphic design starter bundle which will be linked in the description to paste text at the top of this right here all you have to have is a circle or well any other path that matches the curve of your design and then you can use the type on a path tool to paste your text onto that certain path all you have to do is just hover over it and click and then if i change the text color to white you can see that our dummy text has been sort of pasted onto here usually with these circle shapes i would then go ahead and align the text to center up here and then turn this around by 180 degrees and if we now change the text to mountain turn up the font size a little bit you can see it's created a very nice effect and design style. Another variation of the type tool that can be quite handy for t-shirt design is the touch type tool. And if you've got this selected, you can click onto any of your letters and just move them around individually. This is really handy to create a sort of unique, very friendly looking, almost childlike layout to your text without having to outline it and sort of destroying the uh, individual or original text layer. And once you've finished with that, you could still go ahead and change these letters afterwards to different words and the layout itself stays the same, which is very, very useful. Another function you can use to make your text look more unique is envelope distort. And to get to this, just select your text and head over to Object, Envelope Distort and click Make with Warp. And you have different options in terms of styles here. This is what the twist option looks like. And another nice one is Waves. As you can see, it gives the, the letters a sort of wavy style and you can play around with the Bend function up here to get a different look or horizontal and vertical is another way to give this a bit of a tilt. And yeah, it just creates a very nice unique pattern if we click OK and look at the before and after you can see it just looks a lot more eye-catching with a bit of an effect on these letters this is also how I created the design in one of my recent videos uh, where I applied the envelope distort to the word retired and in this case I used the arc lower function and turned the bend into the minus of 15 range minus 20 and then what you want to do is hit OK and draw this box down a little bit so the word is less squished and more readable another cool trick with this function is you can actually move up here and then if you click on edit contents you can go ahead and use the type tool to change the actual word so you could say future click off this and it applies that envelope distort to the new word that you've entered right there and then if you want to go back to editing the envelope distort you can click back onto this little emblem right here and you've got your options of the styles bend and uh, other features Moving on, we've got the Shape Builder tool, which is extremely handy to combine different shapes or erase them from one another. So in this case, I've got lots of different lines right here, boxes and a circle. And if we select the Shape Builder from the menu over here, you can then either just draw over these to combine the shapes or if you hold down the alt symbol you can then have the same effect reversed of erasing these shapes from one another and that way we can very quickly create this sunset design just we need to still color it in one of the quickest ways that i found to apply color to my designs is to use the eyedropper tool if you select it then you can sample any color i'm just going to use this screenshot that i took of a color scheme sample it just by clicking onto this color then hold down alt 
and you'll see the little symbol of the eyedropper change and this means we're going to now paste the color onto whichever object we hover over and same process again I'll let go of alt to sample this little beige color hold down alt to paste it and same again for the bottom colors very quickly applied a really nice color scheme to our sunset design the next tool I want to talk about is the Pathfinder window. This is extremely helpful for many different things and if you don't see the Pathfinder then all you have to do is head over to Window and tick the Pathfinder option down here. Now in this case I've created some circles to form a bit of a cloud shape and to now combine all of these shapes in one click to the cloud all I have to do is select them all and then use the unite function right here. And now if I wanted to erase this little face design from the cloud, then I could select all of these together and hit minus front. And as we can see, because the face of shapes were in front of the cloud, it has taken them out, erased them, and it now has the background shining through. Another really cool use of the Pathfinder window is applying or erasing texture from certain design objects. So in this case, I want to have a texture file cut out of my sunset illustration. If I draw this over, we've got a black SVG texture file here, but how do I quickly cut this out from the sunset? So one way would be using the Pathfinder window by simply selecting all of our objects together and then using the divide function and now i'm going to use the direct selection tool to click on one of these black texture items just click on it then go to select same fill in stroke color and hit delete on your keyboard and now you want to hit control y on your keyboard because there's usually still some leftover traces of vector paths so just select those Go out of the outline mode by hitting Ctrl Y again and now by heading to select same fill in stroke color once again we can also then hit delete for those remainders of the texture file and now if we draw this over onto the actual edge of the artboard we can see once again the background color is bleeding through and the texture has been cut out of our sunset. Next up is the pen tool, which is extremely useful for creating different shapes or just tracing around the outline of an image. And I would recommend locking the image in place if you do this. So select it and hit Control 2 on your keyboard to lock it. And then if you select the pen tool, you can select an outline color only by swapping this. It's usually a a fill color by default maybe change this to a very visible color like red would be very visible on this image and then if I zoom in you can uh, use the pen tool just trace around the outline of this dog uh, it doesn't have to be exact I'm just going to show you it fairly quickly in this example once you're done with that you then have a nice outline of the animal or shape or vehicle whatever you've traced around and you've quickly created it by using the pen tool and then you have it in a vector format, which is really handy. There we go, I've created the outline. Now I'll hit Control Alt 2 to unlock the image and delete it. And if I now change this from a stroke color to a fill, and also to change the color to something else, we see that I've quickly got this nice little dash out outline, and I can place it onto our sunset. Change the color with the eyedropper to black, and there we go, we've got a, a vintage sunset with a dash hound silhouette in front of it. Another important part of t-shirt design is making sure that items are aligned to one another and to the actual artboard so that they'd be printed centrally on our t-shirts. And let's say we've got some text right here, but we want it to be centrally aligned to a sunset. So if you don't see alignment tools, you can head over to window and tick the align box. But usually uh, when you click on any item, they should also appear here at the top. And to align this piece of text, 
to our sunset right now, we need to make sure that the actual sunset itself is grouped by selecting the entire thing and then hitting Control G on your keyboard. We can group that if we then select both the sunset and our text and then click onto the sunset once. We will then align our text or everything else to the sunset itself if we hit horizontally align to center up here or over on the right hand side in the aligns panel. As we can see the text has moved over to the center. I'd now just scale it down a bit so it matches sort of the size of this sunset a bit better. And now in order to align this perfectly to our artboard, um, I'll just group this once again everything together, scale everything up a bit, and now head over to this little symbol right here, make sure it's selected align to artboard, and then you can once again hit horizontally align to center, and it will make sure it's centered within our artboard and in our output file for the printing. Another really useful function that I have in Illustrator is the image trace option. Now, I don't think too many people know about this, but it's really useful if you have an image of something and you want to turn it into a vector. So this American flag, as you can see right here, is an image file, but I want to have it in vector format. And a quick way to do that with Illustrator is selecting the image itself and then hitting image trace right here at the top. Now, first of all, this is not going to look how you want it to look most of the time, but if you hit the image trace panel button up here, we'll open up some different options. For this kind of design, I would change the mode from black and white to color. And then once it's loaded, we can see now this has taken some color but the stars still look a bit wonky. So you need to basically play around with some of these advanced settings right here. If they're not opened, just tick this little triangle. The path, if you turn this up, it'll tell you as well, um, the higher the value, the tighter the fit, meaning it's going to be more accurate, pick up more from the image. Corners, it's also an option where higher value means more corners which in this case might be good because our stars obviously have a lot of hard corners. If you want a very rounded off design, you would have to turn this function down and it would make everything a lot smoother, as you can see right there. And then you have other functions like uh, increasing this right here to reduce the amount of noise, or sometimes you might have an image with a white background where you can click ignore white for it to erase all of the white features within the image. In this case, that would look a bit weird. Um, but it might actually be an option to have this American flag without the white stripes. So yeah, as you can see, it's a very cool feature um, that you can use for more complex images as well and turn them into a bit of a cartoon illustration uh, vector format. But once you're done, you basically want to hit expand right here at the top. And now if we get rid of this window, you can see that image has turned into a vector format, which is really cool indeed and can save you a lot of time. So last but not least, another really cool function in Illustrator is the offset path option. This has many different uses. I'm just going to show you a quick example with some text and the text has to be outlined for this. So select your type layer and then head over to type and to create outlines, which turns it into a shape or a path. And now you can head over to object path and click offset path. And this little window will open where you can play around with the actual offset pixel number. And as you can see, um, you can also go into minus. It basically creates a new shape that is sort of based on the original one that you've got selected. You can also change the joins, which is sort of the edges of your object to round, for example, which looks quite nice. And um, if we click OK on this and change the color to an orange, maybe you can then see you've got this new shape right here created. What I'm going to do now is use the Pathfinder window to unite this new shape and then I'll hit Control Shift and open bracket on my keyboard to move this shape all the way to the back or to the bottom layer. And now I'll repeat the process by going to Object, Path, Offset Path, and once again hit OK on this, then change the color to a bit of a darker shade of orange. I'll once again hit Object, Path, Offset Path, hit OK, and change the color once again to a slightly more dark orange. It's created this very cool and interesting text effect. Obviously, this isn't the only thing you can do with Offset Path. There's many more uses when you're creating different shapes um, and objects, 
But this is just a cool little example of how to create different outlines for your text. So have fun with this and um, yeah, I hope you can come up with some cool new ideas with it. Now, knowing how to design t-shirts is one thing, but you also have to know how to pick the right color schemes to get more sales. And that's why you should watch this video next, where I show you what color schemes I use and a website that's gonna help you find some of your own.